You're listening to Barbell Logic, the podcast where we talk about what it means to experience strength and how you can use simple, hard, and effective strategies in training and nutrition to improve your life. It starts with meeting you where you are right now and finding lasting solutions. Welcome to the show. You're listening to the Barbell Logic podcast. I'm your host, Matt Reynolds. This is another episode of the Coaching Success Series. Happy Friday to you all. Man, if you're not from the Midwest, you've probably heard the statement or the quote before. If you don't like the weather today, just wait a few minutes, wait an hour. Yesterday, it was 82 degrees, and I got up this morning, it was 23 degrees. That's no exaggeration. 82 actual degrees, not heat index. Got up this morning, 23 actual degrees, not wind chill, 23 actual degrees. <laughs> it was crazy. Took the dog out this morning to go to the bathroom. It was not a pleasant experience for how cold it was, especially after acclimating to weather in the 70s and 80s. So that is the Midwest. And that's probably why some of you live in San Diego, because you don't uh, have to experience that. So hope all is well. Today, want to dive right in as we usually do. We try to give you a podcast that doesn't have a bunch of fluff and gets right into the bulk of the lessons for the day. And today, I want to dive into really helping you define your core values. And it's interesting, I was thinking about this a lot. So while core values really permeate everything we do at Barbell Logic, you know this, you know that we're a core value or a value-driven business and really everything I do in my life, we've actually never really addressed core values directly for you, the listener. We've talked about what our core values are in previous episodes. Today, I really wanna focus on helping you define your core values, like your own personal core values. These are unique to you. Now, I want to say briefly, I will talk a little bit about my personal core values because I want to use those as an example. This is very important. We've really tried to stay away from, as you've probably noticed, away from things like religion and politics and whatnot on Barbell Logic because we genuinely want to get everybody strong uh, regardless of what your background is there, what your belief system is there. I'll mention those briefly. I want to make sure you understand like that's because it's unique to me. And so your core values are unique to you. And it doesn't need to be a reflection of Matt. Uh, it shouldn't be, right? It should be you, like personally you. And so in thinking about building your game plan or your goals, which we've talked about many, many times, your overarching goals, I think maybe we've skipped a step potentially because those goals should be a reflection of or an outpouring of your core values. And so once you've identified your core values in your life, you can begin to set actual long-term and short-term attainable goals that support those core values, whether that's in health or business and life or whatever, spiritual, relational, whatever the thing is. The question is, how do we come up with core values? For some of you, this will be very easy. And this isn't that difficult for me. And so I'm gonna give you the process that we've used in the past and what I've used, and hopefully you've got some actionable items you can take with you this weekend and start to think about these things. The first thing I do, and this is like super easy, is I would just take a few days with the idea of core values in the back of your head and just kind of ruminate on those. Probably again, I would use my notepad on my phone. So when I think about certain things, as I'm looking at, I don't know, X or looking at news stories or having conversations, you'll start to see these themes like a big core value is personal responsibility, taking personal responsibility. And you'll write that down. And you may end up with like 10 or 12 or 15. You may only end up with three. That's okay. Let's just write down the things that bring you value that are like the, again, 30,000 foot view these are not action items. These are overarching core values in your life. So that's the first thing I would do is I just take a few days. If you are thinking about it, and I know we overuse the word intentional a lot today, but if you're intentional about thinking about your core values and it's kind of in the back of your head, and so while you're having conversations or reading or on social media or anything, things will start to pop up and you can just make a note. That's why I like doing it on my phone because my phone is always on me. It's in my hand or my pocket or whatever. And so I can just start to make a list. They're not in order yet. You're just, again, bullet points. Come back to like last week. It's kind of, you're just making these bullet points to give you something to go back to and start to ruminate on. And so for me, this will not be a surprise. I am very much drawn to order. I'm very orderly in personality tests that I've taken. And so in general, even if you're not, I don't think core values should be really laissez-faire and living life by the seat of your pants. Like I developed core values at Strong Gym. I carry those values over to Barbell Logic. That article is still on the website. So where are our 10 core values, the original 10 core values for Barbell Logic? Andy Frazella helped me write those back when he was doing some mentorship, back when he was still in Springfield where he started his business. Now he's in St. Louis. Worked with him. He was writing his or putting his together for Supplement Superstore, which was his first business before he opened First Form. And so 
And then you can see on our website, our core values today. Again, I'm not really going to go over those for Barbell Logic because I want to define those, help you define those for yourself. But again, it's really important that your core values, businesses do this all the time. And I'm really not speaking to businesses here. I'm speaking to individuals, but businesses are notorious for having core values that they like post on the wall, but it's a poster and nobody knows what they are. Nobody cares. It doesn't change their actions or change their strategic planning. And that's not at all who we are. Obviously, we can't even put a poster on the wall because we're an online business. There isn't a HQ. Our core values very much permeate the business as a whole and change our actions all the time. Andrew Jackson was talking about this the other day in a meeting that uh, it's the only business he's ever worked for, that the core values literally on a daily basis help us make decisions. And I would argue from the business standpoint, those core values are often an outpouring of the founder's core values. So certainly, I'm sure I have lots of coaches and lots of employees who their personal core values are not aligned exactly with mine, especially if you get into the nitty gritty of like religion and politics and whatnot. But in general, the work ethic and the ambition and the taking initiative and taking personal responsibility, that permeates who we are at Barbalogic. And that is an outpouring of my own personal core values. As you grow as a business and you have more people and more leadership, those core values will change a little bit for the business. But it's interesting. I've read many stories about this. Even years after the founder is gone, the business still retains this piece of the founder in their core values and how they set up the business. And so this is very important for you individuals, especially and obviously, if you are a one man or one woman show, if that's who you are, obviously, the business is going to reflect that as you grow. The business may shift just a little bit from your core values, but that foundation is always going to be there. And so we have to identify what they are. And for us, everything we do comes from our core values. So for example, we have our four major tenets, and they're just four words that we use, which is serve, grow, teach, steward. We serve our clients and coach well, try to grow our business, we teach our community, we steward our resources well. That all comes out of our core values. And really our goals and our strategic goals for three to five year goals and one year goal all stem from those tenets. And those tenets stem from the core values. And so we can't really get into the trenches and identify the goals and the action items and the milestones and the metrics and all that stuff until you really know what your core values are. Who are you trying to be, right? And so one of the important things, again, as you think about over the next few days, what your core values are, they should be a legitimate reflection of you. It should be who you are. That doesn't mean that they won't sometimes be like, this is a core value that's important in my life and I need to work on it. As a matter of fact, that almost always happens. And that's how you elevate the goals to help bring you into alignment with your core values. But it can't be someone that you're not. So for example, like if I had a core value, you know, I just really want to, as a core value, be very quiet and timid and introverted, just be a person of wisdom and just listen a lot and not talk. This is not who I am. Obviously, I'm mean, sitting here recording, I don't know, 500, 600, 700 podcasts. I've been on 300 other podcasts. I like to talk. I'm a verbal processor. It's who I am. I can't, a core value can't be, I want to start being a, you know, just a thinking processor. I've got to speak it. So that wouldn't be one of my core values, right? Because it's just totally opposite of my personality. And so while there are things that are core values that have even been a struggle, and I'll get into details, but even, for example, as the business has grown, I've been open about this. My own personal struggle with health and strength and longevity, you know, coming out of being a professional strongman and business growing, it gets really busy and really stressful. And then, you know, obviously I went through a time period where I remember Scott saying, you know, you're not going to hit any more PR. So what are you going to do? And I wasn't ready to accept that years ago. And now I am. But now the training for me is about health and longevity. I still want to be strong. I still love to strength train. I actually still love to do the main barbell movements. But for me, it's about health and longevity. I don't need to weigh 300 pounds as I get closer to 50. And that is a thing that I need to work on. And so as I start to identify like, okay, the health, longevity, strength, etc, that is a driving core value in my life. But it's been a struggle. It's not someone that I'm not probably if I made a core value of I just which again, I, this would be more action, not really a core value. But if I just wanted to be if endurance was a core value, or like I just want to be great at running marathons, which again, is really a tactical thing, not a core value. It's just not who I am. It's not going to happen. Right. So health, longevity, strength, And then I see that that's a thing that needs to be worked on. That might be the thing that needs to be worked on the most as I think about my core values or other core values that I have that I do those well. They really, again, kind of drive my actions every day. So it wouldn't typically be a goal on my game plan because it's a thing that is healthy. The goal here is to identify your own core values, your own personal core values. 
So I'm just going to give you some of mine so that you can see as an example what they are. My core values do not need to be your core values. Really take some time and consider what are truly important to you and identify those things and start to build your list of core values. Again, don't worry about the order right now. These are not in any particular order that I'm going to share with you. So as I was working through the book and talking to Nick Solin, I have quite a few of these. And so we had to start identifying sort of a ribbon that bound some of these together. And so I noticed, so one, I have these kind of personal or internal core values. These are things that generally are, certainly they will drive my actions and hopefully my life reflects them. But it's not something that I'm going to generally preach or talk. So actually, some of the stuff I'm going to talk about here, this is not stuff that I typically talk about on the podcast, but I just want to give you an example. So again, I'm sure most of you know, because Scott used to give me a hard time about being a Calvinist and whatnot. I'm a Christian. I want to live a life worthy of a biblical elder. I'm not an elder or a pastor right now. And I want to do that in a way that I want to study doctrine and theology, but not just for intellect, but to have my affections stirred. So again, I'm not trying to convince anybody there, but that's an important thing for me. And my life should reflect that. So moving on, I'm a big personal responsibility guy. I'm not going to play the victim, right? I'm owed nothing. I know that everyone gets dealt different cards in life. I was not dealt the best cards in life, but I was pretty good, right? We were very poor, but I had a mom and dad who loved each other and loved us, who valued education. We didn't really know we were poor. We were wearing hand-me-downs, but we were clean and we were tidy and we had pride in who we were. But so I don't want to act like I've had it worse than anybody else because I don't. But ultimately, I'm owed nothing. And that's the way I view it. And so I've got to go out and work and take personal responsibility for my actions and take personal responsibility when something goes poorly in my life or in my business. I'm the CEO, I'm the founder. And so I have to question, like, what did I have to do with this? So personal responsibility is a big piece of that. I want to be known and seen. And by the way, some of these core values need to be, as you think about What is your legacy? What will you be remembered for? Maybe that's another great way of thinking about it as you're starting to write these things down. So while some of these are personal and internal, if you do them well, these are going to be some of the things that people remember you for. And so I want to be somebody who invests in bettering myself in all things, right? In knowledge, in the physical realm, health, relationships, emotional health, all of those things. I read all the time. I'm in a never-ending pursuit of knowledge. I want to better myself. I want to be a better person every single day. And that's, you know, a massive spectrum from actual morality on one side to just like physical on the other side, maybe, and just want to be a better person. So very related to that one, I want to strive to be the best at what I do. We've talked about this before. I've joked that if I were a trash man, um, there's nothing wrong with that, by the way, I would do everything I could to be the best trash man in the world, to be the most efficient trash man in the world, have great service. Like That's who I want to be. A massive core value that we've had in the business since day one was that uh, I want to, and I want our business to choose what's right over everything else, even if it's not what's best for us or what's best for the bottom line. And we're going to choose what's right, morally right, correct, like what is right. And we don't always choose that correctly. We're not always right, but we choose what we believe is right at the time. And so it's really important. I'm never going to make a decision that I know is wrong or morally wrong or lacks integrity and make that decision or make a decision for the bottom line or take service away from our clients or doesn't serve our staff well, never going to make that decision, always going to choose rightly. So, and then someone who took initiative, I've heard the quote, it's the glad assumption of sacrificial responsibility. You see the ribbon that binds that together for my personal internal core values. And then I have another chunk of core values that are really relational and service driven. So I want to be someone who deeply loves my wife and children and values the important relationships in my life. I don't just want to say that and give lip service to that, but actually be that. I strive to be an excellent leader. I'm not saying I am an excellent leader, but I've strived very hard to lead well, whether that is in my family or my business or my community or whatever. Connected to the personal and internal, but turning it into service is, again, I am a person or I want to be and want to be remembered as a person who was in a never-ending pursuit of knowledge developed that knowledge into wisdom, and then freely shared that wisdom with others. So someone who always had a reason for what they believed and practiced. So what good is knowledge if you don't share it? It's like the whiskey collection. What good is the whiskey collection on the wall if you don't share it with good people over good conversation? And knowledge needs to be turned into wisdom to be put into practice. 
and then shared with others so that they can learn lessons in an easier, more efficient manner than you did. And so this is what we try to do with our children. I want my kids to be as wise as I am today at 45 when they are 30. And I want to be far more wise at 55 than I am at 45. And so I want to be someone who is transparent and vulnerable, not afraid of hard conversations, not afraid to emote or be emotional. You know that I sometimes get choked up and that can effectively communicate both love and admonition with logic and empathy. But these things are all connected. And so that's a person that I want to be. I don't want to hide from the hard conversation. I don't want to hide skeletons in my closet. I don't want to, you know, I just want to be honest with who I am and who I've been and then be able to, again, learn those lessons, good, bad, and ugly, and share those with others. I want to be known as someone who served others gladly, who served not to get something in return, who didn't have an ulterior motive, but just served to serve because I think it's valuable. I want to be remembered, and this is a driving force in our business, as someone who was uh, professional and had class. I think that is a missing ingredient in the fitness industry. I think that you tend to have a lot of bro science, unprofessional people, and then you also have the super scientists who are the uber professional people, but this combination of intellect and experience is tough to come by. And then even when someone does that well, they are often unprofessional and laced with profanity and don't look the part, don't dress the part, whatever. I want to be all of those things. And I haven't always been all of those things. I've watched my life change over the years. I mean, I certainly used to be a pro strong man, kind of a bro. Obviously, I was deeply engaged in learning about strength training. But you know, I just, I didn't dress the part. I didn't look the part. I didn't talk the part. I didn't speak very educated. I wasn't super professional. And certainly that's something that we've pursued at Barbell Logic over the years. So, and then someone who understood and practiced the value and finite resource of time and lived an efficient lifestyle, i.e. focused on the important things. Again, going back to the book that I'm writing for Forbes, someone who understood the value of time was able to purge my life of the unimportant, non-urgent things, was able to delegate the non-important, urgent things, was able to efficiently tackle the urgent and important things and really focus my life around the things that were not urgent, but very important. That's someone that I want to be. And then last, in kind of a third ribbon, is that physical and health side. So someone who is focused on the importance of health, strength, and longevity. Certainly, in my earlier life, I would be considered a strength athlete. I was a decent power lifter and a decent strong man. And that's not me anymore. I'm retired. I still love to strength train. I still love the value of strength, and especially the value of strength for improving quality of life. And that's who I want to be. I want to be remembered as the jacked grandpa, maybe the jacked great grandpa. That'd be great, right? And not just for aesthetics, right? Not just like he just looked great, but he actually felt great, was very healthy, generally strong, all of those things. And so those are my core values. And so you can see from there, you can start to pull out the most important things out of the personal and internal piece, or even sort of identify one or two of those in the maybe personal internal one or two of those maybe in the relational or service. And again, maybe that's not a core value. So if you're not a service-driven person, you probably shouldn't have a service-driven core value. And then in the physical slash health realm, if you're listening to this podcast, it's probably a driving core value in your life. So it's probably important. And so you'll start to identify the top, say, five core values. That's what I would try to do is try to get this down to about five major items, five major values in your life. And so when you identify or as you work through identifying your core values from your daily life and work, they should come fairly naturally. It should be really who you are. It requires radical self-honesty, right? You should be aspirational version of yourself, but not a completely different person. You consider the concept of reputation and legacy. What are the core values that matter so much to you that you want to be remembered for them? And you also can think about items in that quadrant four of non-urgent, most important, you know, things like family and relationships, health and fitness, spiritual health and disciplines, healthy business, business practices, et cetera, and start to identify what those core values are. And so then once you have your core values written down, then what? So now you've got these core values, you've you've written them down, maybe you've got 10, maybe you've got 12, you really kind of distill them down to five, and then you put them in priority order. And that could be one, the first thing I would do is put them in order of priority as most important to you. And then two, I would put them order in what are the ones that are maybe you're the most efficient in or that you need to work on the most. And once you do that, 
then you'll start to be able to identify what are the major goals, aspirational goals for say three to five years out, or even the next six to 12 months, which I think are even more valuable because it's something that we can achieve in a relatively short period of time that move you closer and closer to those core values and who you are and who you want to be, both who you are and aspirationally as well. And so that is how we come up with core values. And I think, again, that if you've thought a lot about goals and actions and metrics and you haven't thought about core values, and for some of you, you probably these just naturally have kind of have been an outpouring of who you are. But if you haven't thought about those, I would tell you a great action item is just to take the next few days and start to write those down and make sure that the goals in your life and the goals in your business, the goals in your coaching reflect those core values, right? Again, the great thing about not being so dogmatic about programming or exactly the way we coach or you know, the way we've been able to leverage turnkey coach is that it allows each coach to be uniquely themselves. It's not like, hey, you have to follow this exact program or do it this exact way. There is definitely a system of efficient online coaching that we have figured out how to do in turnkey coach. But the way we address people, the way we talk to people, this is why we're able to connect clients with the right coach for them. There are all types of demographics I would not be best to work for, but we have coaches that are. And for you, if you're listening, you know that you are not perfectly capable of working with every single demographic in the world. But if you identify your core values and what are really important, you can often get clients that align with those same core values. And what's, again, great about Turnkey Coach is that it allows you to express yourself that way in things like the screen recording and talking to your client and not just typing. What Back when we typed things, it was very sort of intellectual and vanilla, and it was just like to the point, and there's not a lot of personality that comes through. And I think with that integrated screen recorder, your personality gets to come through. And obviously, there are things I say to some clients that I don't say to others. If I'm breaking down videos on a Sunday morning, and I've got a handful of like reformed pastors that I coach, you know, I'll say like, happy Lord's Day to you, happy son, you know, that kind of thing. And for people that I know or not, I make another connection in a different spot. And so you're really able to communicate your core values in a unique way at Turnkey Coach. And it's one of the things I love is it doesn't pigeonhole you into a specific way of coaching because we're all different and our clients are going to be different and their core values are going to be different and your core values are going to be different. And if we can align our core values often with the clients that we coach, and it doesn't mean that every, again, certainly things like religion and politics are less necessary and important, but if we are able to coach people who generally have the same outlook and some of the similarities in their core values that you do as a coach, you're going to be far more successful with them. You're going to connect better with them. They're going to stay. They're going to be happier. You're going to be happier because you enjoy coaching them. And so um, those are what we've really strived for at Turnkey Coach. So for you, come up with those core values. Distill them down to five, put them in order, and put them in order of the things that are most efficient, what you need to work on. And from there, you can start to build your goals, actions, metrics, and build that game plan. So that is another episode of the Barbell Logic Podcast. Again, if you've received value from this, we would love a five-star review. As I say every single week, it's actually very important to us. If you haven't done that in a while, uh, try it again. Like, you know, maybe you've got a new phone or refresh those cookies and uh, give us another five-star review. It really helps us with the algorithm. You know, it helps reach more people. Again, we have that teach tenant. The content that we put out for free is not just a way to get conversions. And of course, it is a way to get conversions. Again, I want to be transparent as we put out free content that brings people into the funnel and some of those people funnel down and become paying clients or turnkey coaches or students at the academy or whatever. So that's important. But even if it never did, we never want to neglect our teach tenant because it's a big piece of who we are in our core values. So we want to teach our community and educate them well across the entire client life cycle from absolute newbie to enthusiast to student or even maybe competitive lifter to student to up and coming coach to professional coach like all of those things we want to be there all along the way and provide excellent content that teach you so if you've been taught by this podcast either recently or in the past or across we would love a five-star review would be very helpful for us and so thank you for that thank you for giving me your time this morning and uh, we'll see you next friday